Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Thank you. So glad you're here uh, with us to worship this morning at Emmanuel. My name is Nathan, one of the pastors here, and we want to welcome you for sure um, to Emmanuel. Um, if you are a guest or a member, uh, please make sure you fill out your connection card. You should have received that uh, in your bulletin as you came in. Um, members, please just, uh, if there's anything that needs to be changed, make sure to mark that. Otherwise, you can just mark yourself present. If you're a first-time guest, please indicate uh, that you are such um, with the box provided, and then provide any information that you're comfortable sharing. We'd love to get to know who you are, so we can share a little bit about who we are um, uh, here at Emmanuel. Also, if you're a visitor, we have a get, uh, gift for you uh, at the Welcome Center, uh, a book called Unshakable. We'd love to send home with you um, as a token of our appreciation for you being here, uh, and an invitation to uh, have a conversation with us. Um, and we hope to see you back. There are uh, a lot of things to mention this morning. Um, Easter is a busy time of the year. The first being, and I suppose uh, the most important, um, Easter services this year will be held at the Rao Center. Um, two identical services at 8.30 and 10.30. 8.30 and 10.30 at the Rao Center. And uh, we're working out all those details, but we're excited to be able to take the Easter message, our, our good news of Christ's resurrection, right into the heart of our community and, uh, and proclaim the message that way. So this is a great opportunity for you to invite anyone that you know. Um, bring someone to the Rouse Center um, for our Easter services at 8.30 and 10.30 this year. Um, but before we get to Easter, we're still journeying through Lent. Uh, and we really want you to add some things to your calendar, to your um, devotional life. Um, every Wednesday, we do have midweek services. And... Uh, a great series we're working our way through called Conversations at the Cross. Basically, you're going to hear from two people who are involved in the story in some way. And, and listen in. It's, it's a fictional account. Um, but we're going to listen in to conversations that they may have had as they witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, last week was Barabbas and Caiaphas. And it was great to kind of listen in and think about what those two may have said and how um, they reveal some sort of important truth for us to remember. So those are Wednesdays at 7 also, uh, if you want to come a little early, uh, at 5.30, uh, we have a soup uh, and dessert supper, um, which go to support various ministries here at Emmanuel. Um, we're in the middle of our Humbled series, as you can see, and uh, we're, we're counting our way up towards Easter. Uh, along with this series comes a um, devotional that you can take home. You can pick up hard copies today from here, or you can download this info from our website. Um, another big announcement. Over Memorial Day weekend, we're going to be inviting people from the community to come to our campus to join us for a three-on-three -three basketball tournament. But it's not just a basketball tournament. It uh, also includes our carnival, um, the rides that we remember from the Family Fest. All those rides are going to be there, um, but more. There's going to be a laser tag. Um, there's going to be barbecue. There'll be basketball to watch. So there's, a, there's plenty of things for you to be involved in and simply be a part of. You know, part of our mission here is to reach out into the community and, and you're going to be exposed to a lot of people coming in. So we want you there to just witness, support, encourage, but also find someone to talk to and, and tell about Emmanuel. So that's a great way for us to witness into our community. Um, by the way, all the proceeds for this event go to the Semper Fi Fund. So we're not, we're not raising money for ourselves. We're going to collect all those, uh, those donations, and we're going to give them to veterans um, who, who need our assistance. Uh, and we want to show our support that way. So you can find more information um, by talking to us or going to our website. Um, that's all I've got. So why don't you stand up and find someone you don't know or you do know and say good morning.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Lord God, our Father, hear the silent prayers of your gathered children. Lord God, our Father, hear the spoken prayers of your gathered children. We have turned away from you when we should be turning toward you. Forgive us, Heavenly Father. We have run from you when we should be running to you. Have mercy upon us, Lord Jesus. We have rejected your grace when we should be receiving it. Cleanse us of our sin, spirit of truth. Draw us again to the cross where you died for us, so that we be gathered into your presence and covered with your forgiveness. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength to come to you. By your mighty power and glorious grace, gather us into your presence and shield us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. The Old Testament lesson is from the first chapter of Joel. Be ashamed, O tillers of the soil. Wail, O vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. The vine dries up, the fig tree languishes. Pomegranate, palm, and apple, all the trees of the field are dried up, and gladness dries up from the children of man. Put on a sackcloth and a lament, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Go in, pass the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God, because grain offering and drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God, and cry out to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. In the epistle lesson is from Acts chapter 2. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who, were belie- all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, They received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, 
your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I invite the uh, boys and girls who are with us this morning to come on up for our children's message. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Come on and have a seat. We're going to chat for a little bit. I want to talk to you first about what season it is. What season is it? Oh, it is St. Patrick's Day today. You're right. I see you're wearing a rainbow shirt today. You're right. That's the day. That's today, right? That is a good one. But what season is it? What do you think? Easter. Easter. Actually, that's kind of where I'm going with this. I was thinking someone might say winter or spring. Is that what you were thinking of? Yeah, it is technically, I think, still winter outside, although we want it to be like spring, right? We want the, the outside weather. You can put your hand down, Henry, and we'll talk in a minute, okay? Um, we, it is the season of winter outside, but in the church, I'm going to go a little bit with what you were saying about it being kind of the season of Easter, but we call it Lent. Do you see all this purple? There's a lot of purple. I mean, there's purple there, all around. Purple is the color of Lent. Can you have a seat, Jeff? I'm glad you're here. Um, we, purple is the color of Lent. Lent. Purple kind of stands for the color of royalty, because Jesus is royal to us. It also stands for the color of mourning, sadness. Because during the season of Lent, we remember that Jesus died on the cross, which was for us pretty amazing what he did for us. And during Lent, we kind of focus on that for 40 days. Now, today at church, we talk about it, but I want to kind of talk about what we can do at home when we're not here on Sundays. All those other days, Monday through Saturday, what can we do to focus on what Jesus did for us during Lent? What's something you could do? Maybe pray every night before bed. That might be something new or different or adding that to your schedule. Other things, this is something else too. Do you remember that we passed these out, these Count Up to Easter cards? I don't know if you're doing them, but I actually have extras so that if you haven't done one yet, you can take one. Or maybe if it's been a challenge to share. I, I have already done one. You have one too? Good, good. My arms are sticking out because it just hangs up. Okay, okay. I, I encourage you guys to maybe do something like this or prayer before bed. Today, Pastor Tiemann's actually going to be talking about maybe taking something away from your schedule or taking something that you really like to do. It's basically doing something each day so that we remember to focus our eyes on Jesus and what he did for us. And it might be adding a prayer every day or doing an activity every day or maybe taking something away so that our ideas and our thoughts go to him. Let's pray about that. Will you fold your hands? Oh, dear Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you so much for all that you did for us. Lord, during this Lenten season, help us to focus on you, turn our eyes to you and all that you do. Be with us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Yeah.
let me invite you this morning to find your sermon notes. It looks like this. You can follow along as we go, fill in the blanks if you like, and use this as a part of your continued devotion throughout the week. Before we get to that, however, I have a little proposition this morning. How about if I had a surefire, foolproof method that was guaranteed to let you lose at least 50 pounds. Okay? No, doesn't cost you a cent guaranteed to work every single time. How would you feel about that? Pretty good. A lot of us would like that. You know, I kind of sound like an internet, internet, one of those, you know, pop-up box commercials. You know, Americans spend $33 billion a year on weight loss remedies. 33 billion, that's with a capital B. And yet, two thirds of us are still overweight, so it's not really working out all that well. And yet, we constantly try to diet, don't we? Diet has is, is really become like a four letter word almost, <laughs> you know, diet. So we diet to try and lose weight, we, try, we diet to try and look better, to feel better, to, to gain more muscle, to lose cholesterol, to lower our blood pressure, and on and on and on it goes. So we have this ugly word called diet. But there's an even uglier one that we're going to talk about this morning, and that is a four-letter word called fast. Even uglier than diet. Now, it would be fine to go on a healthy fast to do something for your body, but that's really not what we're talking about at all this morning. What I want to talk to you about is a holy fast. <clears throat> I can't guarantee that if you go on this journey with me over these next five weeks that is left of Lent, that you'll lose any weight at all. I can't even guarantee that your body will be any healthier, though it might be. But I can guarantee, absolutely, with all certainty, that you will gain spiritual depth. So let's talk about what your holy fast might look like. We begin with these words from our text from the book of Joel. Joel said, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. As Laura was telling the children earlier, we are in a new season or about to go into a new season, which we call spring. Well, there's this other new season, which is Lent. Lent is the signal of spring. The days are lengthening, the, the sun is shining longer. And so there's a whole new mood, although it's not exactly what you would expect in the church year. Rather, it is the ending of party time. What's the... What's the festival that they do down south in, in New Orleans and places like that just before Lent? What's it called? Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras right? So Mardi Gras is gone. And we do all this uh, gluttony and indulgence on another day right before we do the, the Ash Wednesday thing. Which one is that? Fat Tuesday, right? It's where you, you eat all that unhealthy stuff because you know the next six weeks we are going to get serious. And that really is what Lent is all about, this whole new mood really to prepare us for our journey to the cross. We will get to the cross regardless. The journey will end at the cross in the empty tomb regardless of what you and I do, regardless of what the church does. But it is so much better, it will be so much sweeter, so much more glorious if we heed the call of the Lord to repent. And that is what Joel is calling us to do. He's saying, repent of your sins. Repent of your thoughtlessness. Repent of your selfishness. Repent of your neglect of God. Repent of your neglect of the word and prayer and all things spiritual. Now, we've got three lines there I put in your notes, and we could have listed all kinds of things. The first two, repent of your sins, whatever those might be. Repent of your neglect of God. But then, what is your obstacle? 
What is blocking you from this journey to the cross? What is standing in the way of a deeper relationship with the Lord? You know what it is, so fill it in and address it. Repent of it, give it up to the Lord, and turn from it. Joel says, repent, put on sackcloth, and lament, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar, go in, pass the night in sackcloth, O Lutherans, O Emmanuelites. This is evidence of our repentance. God certainly knows when our heart is true, but these outward expressions of sorrow, like fasting, giving something up, or weeping, or wailing, or putting on sackcloth. This is evidence on the outside of what hopefully is happening on the inside. But still we need to make no mistake, unless the heart is reached, it's still only a cold and empty ritual. As Jesus said, these people, talking about those around him, the Pharisees in particular, quoting from the book of Isaiah, he said, these people, they honor me with their lips. In other words, they say the right things. They may even do the right things. They may put on the sackcloth. They may, they may be fasting. They may be weeping. They may be, they may be crying out. But their hearts are far from me, and that's what's important. Their worship is in vain. Their teachings are simply rules taught by men. You know, fasting is, is, a, is a very, very old ritual going back to the Old Testament, biblical times. So in modern times, especially we as Protestants, we as Lutherans, have kind of poo-pooed the whole thing, right? Fasting, that's for, that's for the Catholics. You know, they have to do that. That's, that's part of their ritual. But you know, there's, the ordinances of the Catholic Church no longer require fasting still encouraged, but you don't have to fast on Fridays, you don't have to fast during Lent, you don't have to uh, not have meat during this time, time of the year. So as Lutherans, we say, see, we're, gonna do, we're, we're, we're just so much more spiritual, we're deeper, we're, we're not going to do the, the ritual thing, and if we're going to do anything, we're just going to add stuff, right? So we're going we're gonna to pray more, we're going we're gonna to read the Bible more, we're going to do some acts of kindness, random acts of kindness for people. And that is what I have done for years as well. Now I've tried the, the fasting thing. Would you agree with me that giving up anything is hard? Raise your hand if something you like, right? How many of you love ice cream? Anybody? Have you ever tried giving that up? It's hard. How about French fries? You know, just these little things, you wouldn't think it would be that hard. Maybe it's the salt. I don't know. It's hard to do. How about chocolate? Anybody like chocolate? Yeah. It's hard when we really crave something, when we like something, when we love something to give it up. And it's because, as human beings, we don't want to deny ourselves anything. Some of you still remember the old commercials. I don't know if they're still on TV or not, but years ago, uh, the old makeup commercial. What is it, L'Oreal? Do you remember that? What was the slogan? You're, because you're worth it, right? Because you're worth it. And that's how we feel. Because we're worth it, we should not have to deny ourselves anything whatsoever. But here is the truth. Our physical and our spiritual appetites are linked. God knows, Jesus knows, that there is a link between our physical pleasure and how we approach the Lord. In Matthew chapter 5, on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, not for ice cream, <laughs> not for french fries, but for righteousness. When our stomach is filled and our palates are satisfied, we focus more on ourself and we lose sight of what is truly important, and that is our relationship with God. So this morning I want to talk a little bit more on the second part here, how we can 
refocus or recenter on God during the season of Lent. So we need to look at our motives first and foremost. And as always, we look at what they ought not be. So our motives must never be for health benefits. Now, don't misunderstand. <laughs> health benefits are great. We should focus on our body. It is the temple of the Lord, after all. But when it comes to the spiritual, this cannot be our motive for fasting. Oh, yeah, I'm going to fast during Lent. I'll drop a few pounds. Nice wrong motive. Or sometimes we bargain with God. Anybody ever bargain with God? Yes, we do that, right? God, if I do this, then... And you fill in the blank of the promise. So it's not about gaining new power or favors from God, and it certainly isn't about a show of piety. It isn't about proving to our neighbors and our friends, maybe our spouse, uh, just how deep and spiritual we are. Again, Jesus says, and when you fast, do not look gloomy <laughs> like the hypocrites. The whole point of the Pharisees to fast as they followed the letter of the law was to show everybody else how pious they were, and that is not the point. Rather, we want to become unsettled, whether it's fasting or whether it's adding. Because when we do so, we learn what truly controls us. We learn where our motives truly lie. Let me give you an example. When I was in Atlanta years ago, uh, back when My Fair Lady, and I guess it's still probably the most popular show on Broadway ever, uh, it had a long run and then it was off for a while. I guess it's back now again. But it, at any rate, we had a couple from the church there and, the, and they were, were planning to go see it. And of course, they had to get tickets way, 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 way in advance. It was like nine months uh, before the actual show, they had to buy their tickets. So they did that and they planned a summer vacation then to go to, to Broadway and go to the Lincoln Center and, and see this wonderful play. So they did that and they got there in plenty of time and they had great seats like fourth row, center aisle, and, and they were there, and the place was filled up. And before the curtain dropped, every single seat was filled except one. Now, the husband of the couple was sitting there, and the seat next to him was empty. And then there was another lady uh, on the other side of that. So he knew, and, and I know this as well because I have broken this cardinal rule, you can never, ever talk during a play. See, I didn't know that once upon a time, and, and I learned that because the person next to me yelled at me. And I said, well, you're talking. <laughs> so anyway, uh, another story. So at intermission, he then speaks to this woman. And he says, you know, it's really amazing. You know, the, the show is, is, is all sold out except for this one seat. We had to, we had to get our, our tickets nine months in advance. It's just amazing that someone would, would not show up. And she said, oh, well, that, that's my seat too. You see, uh, I bought that one for my husband, but my husband died. And the man said, well, that's, that's terrible. I'm, I'm very sorry about that. But you know, you probably could have invited a, you know, a friend or a neighbor or something. And she said, no, uh, they're all at the funeral. <laughs> all right, so I made up the story. But it works, doesn't it? Kind of, kind of, kind of works. Sometimes we get our priorities mixed up. And so unsettling our routine by giving something up, a holy fast will teach us what actually is controlling us. It exposes our pet sins. You know, when someone goes on a fast from ice cream or french fries or, or whatever it might be, breakfast or lunch or desserts or sweets, and they get really, really hungry, a lot of people get very mean <laughs> as well, don't they? And their temper is what is controlling them. And there are others who love then to brag about what they are giving up, and they tell everyone, and this sin of pride is exposed. And unsettling will will bring up to the surface the sin that controls us, pride or anger or, or jealousy, whatever it might be.
But here's the good news. In such a holy fast, as this, this sin bubbles up to the, to the surface and, it, and it's exposed, then it can recenter our focus on Jesus. Because Jesus then, as we repent of that sin, as we give it over to him, he can redeem it and forgive it. And then he gives us new life and energy as John chapter 10 promises. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. The abundant life, this life that is, that is centered on a relationship with God and what he has done for us. That is why this unsettling is such an important concept of Lent. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to get to the cross by the time Good Friday rolls around. Regardless of whether you are unsettled, regardless of whether you are fasting or, or whether you are adding something to your routine. But I can guarantee you that a holy fast and unsettling will make this journey to the cross unbelievably sweet. And so let me encourage you to go on a holy fast, whatever it might be. And I've seen over the years so many people who have benefited from such a journey. Years ago, again, there was a little girl. It was on an Ash Wednesday service. You know the gospel that we had for today from Matthew chapter 6 about fasting. It's the traditional gospel reading for Ash Wednesday. So I don't usually preach about fasting all that much, but I did years ago, and, and this little girl comes, she's about five years old at the end of the service, and she looks up, and, and she said, and, you know, I'm not even sure she'd actually listen to the sermon at all, you know, being five years old, some of you at 55 have the same problem, but anyways, so she looked up to me, and she said, I'm going to give up Pop-Tarts, you know what Pop-Tarts are, right? You know, she's five, she can put this thing in the toaster, you know, these little ooey, gooey, you know, strawberry, cherry, chocolate, you know, you get the idea, gooey, really good stuff, you kind of eat, you know, and so she's going to give it up, and she said, I'm going to give up Pop-Tarts for Lent, and my mommy, because she really loves potato chips, she's going to give them up, it's her favorite thing in the whole world, and her mother looks at her like, what? <laughs> and she knew now she couldn't have a potato chip for six weeks. I saw a man who was a, a pipe smoker, and for Lent, he decided he was going to give it up. And then after Lent, he never picked up a pipe again. There was another lady, and, and she decided that she was going to give up gossiping. Of, I'm not sure that's the exact uh, you know, <laughs> idea, but to give up an actual sin. And so she gave up gossiping, talking around the water cooler all during the season of Lent. And afterwards, she said she had never felt so clean in her entire life because she no longer was, was diving into the garbage of other people's lives. Another lady said that she was going to, to give up soap operas, not that there's anything really wrong with soap operas, but she's going to give that up, and she was going to study her Bible during that hour that she would spend during the week every day. Another lady said she was simply going to pray more often, regardless of what it might be. Unsettling makes the journey to the cross so much sweeter. And finally, whatever you give up, my friends, or whatever you add to unsettle your routine during the season of Lent is infinitesimally small compared to the magnitude of Christ's sacrifice for you on the cross. This summer, I think it's the 500th anniversary of the Passion Play in Ober Amargau, is that right? Is it 500 or 200? At any rate, it's a round number. And it reminds me of a famous story. Years ago, there was an American businessman who went there to Austria. And he was there for the Passion Play, and he went backstage. It was in the time when Anton Lang, a famous actor, was the guy who played Jesus, and he carried the cross. And so this businessman, he went, and he saw the cross there in the corner backstage, and he wanted to see how heavy it really was. So he tried to lift it up. Couldn't budge it even an inch. And he was amazed that it was so heavy. He thought it would be hollow, and he, and he thought it would be light. And so he asked the actor, why would you carry such a heavy cross? 
And he said, sir, if I didn't have the full weight of the cross, I couldn't play his part. My friends, you and I will never play the part of Jesus Christ. We'll never know exactly what it was like to bear the burden of the sins of the world, to endure the agony and the suffering of the cross. And yet, anything that we do, as we are unsettled during the season of Lent, will teach us just a little bit, and we will gain a greater understanding of the depth of the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ, as he bore our sin for us. May God grant that to you. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's all rise. <coughs> Join me as we make profession of our faith this morning through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. Lead your church, O Lord, that she may mightily reflect your light to those in darkness, and call the sinner to mend his ways and deeds, and believe the gospel. Raise up godly men and women to serve your church, and give special blessings to the men set apart for the ministry of your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Give peace, O Lord, to our troubled world, where anger, dispute, jealousy, and strife divide. Give unity and goodwill. Bless our President, Congress, and all in authority in this land and in all nations, that they may walk in your ways and serve you for the protection of the weak, the relief of the oppressed, and the defense of your precious gift of life. Lord, in your mercy. Bless, O Lord, the mission work of your church and the missionaries across the world. Make us each mindful of our own calling to give evidence to the hope within us so that family, friends, and even strangers may hear the gospel from our lips. Lord, in your mercy. According to your will, O Lord, heal the sick, relieve the suffering, comfort the grieving, and give peace to the dying. Especially we lift up to you Nova Nolte, Keith Shipbaugh, Kathy Flynn, Jeff Shakatano, Stan Fates, Tom Rancic, Eleanor Stegeman, Mike Anderson, Richard Dorsett, Joyce Montgomery, and Shirley Burnett. We also offer our hope in you and pray that you'd be with the friends and family of Beth Oliver, our former DCE and Rose Schutz mother, who has, you have called to your glory. We pray for these and all whose names we lift in, up in our hearts. Sustain them in hope and give them patience and endurance until their healing comes, whether in the restoration of health here or the gift of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, heal our pride, O Lord, that would keep us distant from your mercy, and renew us, body and soul, so that we may honor you with all that we are and with all that we have. We worship you not as we ought, but as we are able, asking you to accept in Christ our voices of praise and the tithes and offerings of our gifts. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, remembering all your goodness and praying the promises of your word, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to your merciful care. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we collect our offerings. You know, giving an offering is a disruption to our routine, and that's not a bad thing. As we give, we are reminded that all we have is a gift from God, and we recall how much God gave for us all. So give generously and pray that God would use your gifts 
to grow his kingdom. thank you, O Lord, for these gifts that you have given us. And now as we return a portion of them to you, we pray that you would use them to grow your kingdom and bring faith to this dark world. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, so that with cleansed hearts and minds we may be gathered into your presence and joyfully celebrate at your table in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, so that we may be renewed as your sons and daughters. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the, is the New Testament in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace we have in Christ with one another.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to gather your wandering children together, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.